Well, last week was certainly different as it relates to how we did church. <laughs> and this week is even more different. And yet we are able to do this, and I'm grateful for that. Thank you for so many of you who uh, kind of joined us online last week. It was a great opportunity for us as a church to celebrate the fact that we're not at the mercy of what circumstances are, that we still get together as a church even though we're in different places. And so today, as we come to you from the Road Trammels dining room, um, you probably, uh, some of you know, some of you don't know, but we live on the west side over close to Franklin High School. And uh, we're, we're glad to be able to open our home to you in this way, on this day, so that we can uh, open God's Word together, we can worship together, we'll sing together, we have a uh, special focus for children today and uh, some real treats for you, I think, as we move forward. So we're glad that you're here today uh, in the Road Trammel Dining Room as we worship together. Uh, I, I would be interested in knowing if we could sit face to face today. Uh, I would be interested to know how you would answer this question, where do you live? And I'm not really talking about where you live as it relates to the location. I'm talking about where you live in your spiritual life these days. A lot of things going on out there, a lot of pressures that are on us. And uh, just, you know, a lot of things are just different. And so I'm, I'm really praying for you as it relates to where your spiritual temperature is these days. Uh, today we're going to look into the book of Psalms. The psalmist gives us a great word about dwelling in the presence of God, dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty. And we'll talk about that uh, as we go forward. So I'm going to invite you to grab a Bible, and we'll go to Psalm 91 in just a few moments. And uh, we'll, we'll hear this word of hope, this word of strength that he gives us as it relates to the times of disorientation in which we are living these days. So as we go into that, let me just ask you to join me in prayer, and uh, we'll begin our worship service. Father, thank you for this day and for this opportunity. We are grateful so much for Jesus Christ and for the life that you give us, for the hope and the strength that you give us in these times uh, where normal seems to be different and may be for a long time. So help us to settle into you, to listen to your spirit today, to sing together, worship together, pray together, and then help us to be your salt and light in this world in this dark day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Looking forward to worshiping with you today.
so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became
I want to talk to you as we begin today about a term uh, in biblical studies, especially in the book of uh, Psalms. Uh, the term is disorientation. Essentially what disorientation means to us is it is a time or circumstance that causes normal to just fall apart. Uh, as we get into that, I'm going to give you an example of that, but uh, I've been reading this book. It's called Thunder Dog. It was given to me and to Teresa by a church member, and uh, it's written by Michael Hingson. Michael's story is that he was born blind, and throughout the course of the book as it unfolds, it talks a little bit about Michael's life and his um, adjustments to a sighted world as a blind person. And what makes it uh, especially uh, impactful is that Michael and his C&I dog were in one of the World Trade Center towers on 9-11. And so it talks about his escape and how his dog helped him to escape. But I want to take a passage out of this book. And I do recommend it, by the way, as good reading. But I want to take a passage out of this book that captures for us uh, a blind person's senses as they come to bear on what's happening after he had gotten out of the tower and was on his way trying to reach safety when that first tower fell. And so I pick up reading, this is on page 108. It says, the south tower emits a deep rumble that becomes a deafening roar. I hear glass breaking and metal tearing accompanied by a chorus of shrill and terrified screams. I will never forget that sound as long as I live. It was like a cross between a freight train and a waterfall of breaking glass. He jumps down a little bit and he says this, the impact creates a vibration that travels through my feet and up my legs and the street feels like a trampoline bouncing. A jolt of fear rips through me and my throat freezes. I can't even scream. That is a great depiction of disorientation. When something happens in our lives that shakes the normal, and for us, for me, for you, for the gathered church at First Baptist Church and across this nation and across the world, really, uh, the events of 2020 and especially of March 2020 have jammed us into a time of disorientation. As Christians, I, I think there are three questions, at least three questions that we should ask, ask ourselves as we come up against this time of disorientation when the normal has fallen apart and things that we never dreamed would be part of what we're doing is, is the reality of our day. Three questions. The first one is, how should I live during this crisis? Maybe a corollary to that one or a side to that one is how, how can I get through this crisis? But really the question is how can I live during this crisis? Secondly, I would say how can I cope in a way that honors God? So many different things, so many different emotions. How do I cope through that? How do, how do I do this in a way that honors God rather than uh, maybe reflects poorly on Him? Third question is what should I do? How do, I, how do I do this? How do I get through this? What do I do? So let me give you a principle that I think is really helpful for us as we come to understand this disorientation that we're in. Here's the principle. In times of disorientation, we should look for God. I, I, th I think that's another way of saying that we should pay attention to where we live. Uh, I, I've entitled this message with a question. Where do you live? And I'm not talking about the Rotramo house on the west side of El Paso. I'm not talking about you, wherever you live uh, physically. I'm talking about in your spiritual life, pay attention to where you live. In times of disorientation, look for God. We're in Psalm 91, as I told you. And I'm not going to be able to cover the whole psalm, but I want to give us enough here to hang on to and to drive us into some very focused prayer and some focused living. So I'm going to read the first two verses and then I'll drop down and read verses 14 through 16. Psalm 91, the psalmist writes this, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God, 
in whom I trust. Verses 14 through 16, because and this is God talking now and the way this psalm is put together. The first one is someone, the psalm writer, but he really takes our, uh, who we are and puts it into that. But God now answers in verse 14, because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. And when he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a great passage of scripture. For that assurance that we have when normal falls apart around us, we have these words of the psalmist saying, I will choose to be where I'm supposed to be living which is in the shadow of the Almighty. And God's response to that is, because of those choices, I will be with you and I will walk with you. My question to you is, where do you live? And where you choose to live in times when normal falls apart is a choice. We're not, we're not so impacted by what's going on around us that we have no say in that. It's a choice. When Teresa and I bought this house, it came at the end of a long process where we went all over town many times. I'm sure that uh, the process of that for us got us uh, kind of out of sorts at time, and we wanted to have that place that we called home and we wanted to settle in, but we knew that you make that choice and then you have to live with it. So what is the choice that you've made in this time? Where do you live today? Are you looking for God through this? Or are you looking for relief? Do our prayers reflect the true status of our heart? Can we go to God and say, hey, I, I don't understand this. I want to understand, but I don't. Or do you feel comfortable enough with God because you live with him on a day-to-day -day kind of level that you can go to him and say, I don't like this. Uh, I need some answers. God's big enough to handle all of those questions. We're going to transition now into a prayer time. Uh, last week we did several, a couple of sections where you had discussion opportunities, and we'll have one of those today. But uh, we're going to put two opportunities in here for you to pray together. If you're with your family or if you're by yourself watching this, then you have the opportunity to spend some time in prayer and reflection as you pray. But he, here's what we want this prayer time to be. I, I, I would encourage you to pray these questions. God, where are you? in all of this. Actually, before you do that, I think it might be better if you just ask God to help you know where you are in all of this. Where are your thoughts? Are you given to despair? Are you given to just uh, sign it off as, uh, well, here we go another day? Where are you in this? Where are your thoughts? Where are your emotions? It's easy for us to lose heart. Where are your emotions? And ultimately, where's your faith? in this? Where are you living? Where's God in this? And ultimately, how do you move those two together? If you know this about God and you know this is where you are, how do you bring those two together? We're going to give you about three minutes now to do some praying, and so we encourage you to take that time accordingly.
Hello everybody, I'm Martha Jackson and I'm the children's minister here at First Baptist Church. I'm also a wife and a mom. I have two daughters. And um, when they went to college, I miss them so much. I miss them every day. And I was looking for a way uh, to keep in contact with them. So I started texting them. I remember texting them every day. Yes, every day. I will text them sometime in the morning to say, good morning, how are you doing? Sometime at night, just to say, good night. I love you, I'm praying for you. So one time my husband asked me, so you text them every day? They didn't text you back. And I said, well, I'm not expecting them to text me back. You know, I hope, I mean, I wish they could, but I'm texting every day because I want them to know that I'm thinking about them every day. And I want them to know that I'm praying for them. And whenever they text me back, well, I'm happy and I'm, they, I'm here for them. So here at First Baptist Church and uh, the children's ministry, we are thinking about you. We are praying for you every day. We know that these times are um, different things going on all around us and you are at home with your children. But we are thinking about you. I miss you. I miss the children. I miss you don't see it over here. But we are doing some things to keep in contact. Yes, like I was doing with my daughters, the text that I was doing every day. We are trying to do new things and some things so you know that we are thinking about you and we are praying for you. One of those things is that we want yes to give you some tips, yes to help you and support you in the work that you are doing with your kids. So like today, we have Megan Head. She's a wife and a mom. She's a Sunday school teacher to the fifth graders, and she has some th tips for you. So hopefully that can help you today, tomorrow, or this week. And until we'll see you again, remember I'm praying for you. Hi, First Baptist family. I know many of us are settling into our new normal um, all together in our homes. And as we get started with um, this 15 days of shelter in place, I just want to give you some things that Mike and I have been trying with Emerson um, that have helped our family life go smoothly together. <laughs> Number one, make sure that you establish a routine and a schedule that works for your family. Number two, communicate with one another about times when you are going to need to be online or out of pocket for your job so that your spouse can help you watch your children. Number three, make sure you include a variety of activities in your schedule, including outdoor activities and active activities. You don't want to become sedentary during this time. Number four, partner with and talk to your child's teacher. They're there to help you and the schools are working hard to establish online learning options. And number five, be intentional. Remember that if you wanna pray with your teenager, you need to pray with your toddler. If you wanna read the Bible with your 15 year old, then you need to read the Bible with your five year old. Together, we as parents can redeem this time. We can make it not just a time we survive, but a time that we thrive. We can make it a time where we came together as families to establish new routines, new traditions, and where we made Jesus the center of our households. Thanks guys, we're praying for each and every one of you, and Michael and I are so grateful that we get to be part of the First Baptist family. We begin this second segment now with uh, a principle that we'll lay out there for you. Here it is, God is always on the move to accomplish his purposes. He's always moving, he's always in charge, he's always guiding history to its appointed end. And so we can know that every step of every day, God is moving to accomplish his purposes. And there's a corollary that comes to that as it impacts our particular lives, especially in times of disorientation. And that is that when we find ourselves in times of disorientation, we find ourselves on fertile ground for spiritual growth. God is always on the move, accomplishing His purposes. 
and nothing surprises him, nothing catches him off guard. And so even a COVID-19 coronavirus that causes the world's normal to be totally changed, God is still at work in that and it provides fertile ground for us in our spiritual growth. These truths have to impact our approach to this situation. If God really is God, and He is, and God really does love us, and He does, and God really is moving history and moving the circumstances of our lives toward His accomplished purposes, and He is, then that means that we have the opportunity not just to survive this, but to thrive through it, to find that point of growth that He has for you and for me as we work our way through all of this. That takes me back to the question that is driving everything we're talking about today. Where do you live? In times of disorientation, where have you chosen to build your house? Let me pull it back this way, and I'm going to show you a few things out of this passage that help us here. Um, but really it comes down to a question of what do you know about God, and how does that impact your life? What do you know about God? Let's go to what the psalmist says here, because in Psalm 91, we read the first two verses, but now I want to read verses 3 through 6, because in these verses now, he steps back from that statement of faith that says that I will trust in God, and now he says these are some of the supporting reasons for that. Here's what he says, verse 3, for I will deliver you, this is God, or excuse me, for this is the psalmist writing, verse 3, he says, For he, that is God, will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. Verse 5, You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. Let's, let's pull that apart. Let's just back it up. And I, really kind of what I want to do today is just nudge you to some further study here. It's an incredible passage of Scripture. We have hanging on the wall just to my left here, uh, a wall hanging that my daughter made for Teresa because this is one of Teresa's life verses, that God will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. It's a great picture of love and protection. So let's see what he says about who God is. But we start with what he says about the threatening images. Just listen to how many of these are lined up. We have the snare of the fowler. We have that threat of deadly pestilence. We have another one as we drop down to verse 5, a terror of night or an arrow by day, and verse 6, a pestilence that stalks in the darkness. It's destruction after that, one thing after another. It's as if the, the psalmist steps back from the, the challenging situation, from the, the difficulty that he's going through and the threats to his very existence, kind of like a COVID-19. And he looks at those things and he calls them what they are, but then he puts with them the the truth of what he knows about who God is. For he will deliver you. So God is a deliverer. He will cover you. That's the picture uh, of a bird of, as it pulls its chicks in close and then covers their wings down over those chicks to protect them from things. What a great picture of God and who he is. This is a frequent image that we find in the Psalms. God is also faithful to us as a shield and a buckler. Those are two different words that come from the military world and one's a full shield and the other one is a smaller one to ward off arrow, arrows. Every one of those come together in the way he puts this together. He says, I know what's out there, but I know who God is. Here's another good principle for us that grows out of that. God never moves in times of disorientation without providing grounds for trust. I'll say that a different way. God never takes us through these times when normal falls apart without first giving us everything we need to trust Him to take us through it. 
What do you know about God? Do you know that God's bigger than a virus that changes our normal? Do you know that God's big enough to take you through a time that's going to be challenging economically? As a church, do we know that? As individuals, do we trust God to never forsake us, never leave us as Jesus promised? God will never take us through times of disorientation without first giving us grounds to trust him. So we want to give you a chance to rehearse that a little bit. We have that choice about where we live. We have the choice about how we will handle ourselves through this and what will we believe that will get right down into the bottom part of our daily living. Where will you live? So let me just tell you, as you rehearse what you know about God, go with what you know. <laughs> if you know that God's loving and that he's capable of protecting, uh, capable of taking you through some economic struggles, go with what you know. We want to give you a chance to do that now. We're going to take a couple of minutes, two or three minutes here, and we want to give you the opportunity to spend a little time talking as a family or whoever you're with there. If it's just you by yourself, then do some reflecting on these couple of questions. The first one is I want you to spend a little time thinking about talking about what you know about God. This is a great time for personal testimony. What has God taken you through in the past that prepares you to trust him with what we're going through now? So, so what do you know about God as point of personal experience. The second question is, uh, how can you and we live in a way that's consistent with what we know? What do we need to do? What do we need to change maybe that will help us be consistent with what we know about God? We'll give you a few minutes now to do those things.
So we come to this final segment and there's a question, actually it's a two-part question that I think needs to drive what we do with this and where we take this message today. So the first part of the question is, uh, what does trust look like? When we come to talk about trusting God and having faith in Him, uh, especially in times like this, this disorientation, what does trust look like practically? And then the second part of that is, what do I do with that? Once I get to that point, what do I do with that? So we begin with a, a principle, another principle today. Here's this one. Never allow a situation or an emotion that grows out of that situation to be bigger than God. Let me run that by you again. Never, ever allow the situation that you find yourself in or the emotions that are triggered by that to be bigger than God is. We do that sometimes without thinking, and that's part of our problem. Sometimes we need to be a little more reflective of what we're thinking and what we're going through, what we're feeling in a situation. Uh, I'll drive you back to this passage in verse 2. I'll read it again, but I want you to notice here that what the psalmist does is he takes the truth of who God is, as he will show us in those next verses, and then he draws this conclusion, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I trust. We've already looked at how his situation was loaded with danger and threats. And yet he was able to say, I trust in God. Living in the shadow of the Almighty puts us into that environment where we can recognize God's hand, God's love, God's involvement, God's sovereignty. And it enables us to settle into that and say, I put my trust in him. Now, one of the things I want to highlight here is that sometimes uh, we can get a little flippant with God's uh, sovereignty and a little bit of uh, almost, you know, just kind of like a, uh, a superstitious kind of thing almost. If we say certain things, then that makes the situation go away. And uh, while, while I think those are well-intentioned, I think we need to be careful about that. Uh, a true, deep, abiding faith in God is a reflected faith in God. It's not just, well, I'll, I'll grab these little nice sayings that we have and hold on to them. Uh, in other words, I, I think it's important that we recognize that faith and trust in God is not some kind of a tool that we use in order to live in denial of what the circumstances are, what the danger is. Let, let's just call it what it is. The times that we are living through now are really dangerous, really difficult. We know that because our elected leaders and our medical community is saying to us, this is so serious that we need to do things that are different. Our normal has fallen apart and it's becoming something different. So let's not deny that and let's, let's give that space for people who recognize what's going on and maybe lose heart a little bit, at least let's give them space to say, yeah, you are right. It is a dangerous time. This is a trial that we're going through. But as Christians, uh, we come to this with a, a point of reference that other people don't have. If they don't know Jesus Christ, if they don't sh live in the shadow of the Almighty, they don't necessarily understand that we have a choice. We can choose to live in fear, and we can choose to live at the mercy of the circumstances, or we can choose to trust God. And we can choose to build our house in the shadow of the Almighty, as the psalmist says here. We choose to live where God is. We choose to live under that umbrella of who He is and how he handles us and how he handles the world around us. We do that and we can be uh, faithful to him and we can trust him because we are grounded in his love. As we live in his presence, we know his love. As we know his love, we can trust the fact that he's not going to abandon us to the circumstances. We also know his protection. We know that it's sufficient. And so those things come together for us and, and they hold out. And so we have a situation here that is full of fear and danger. And we have a body of truth here that we know helps us to understand who God is. And we then have to say, which one of those will I choose to live with the most authority? The psalmist 
says, trust looks like this. I choose to live in the presence of God and in His power. That's what trust looks like. So then what do we do with that? I, I think the easy answer is that we say, and we put that strictly on a personal level, I choose to live in that and therefore I will not be afraid and therefore I will uh, you know, understand that this is not all that there is for me to, to see in life, that God is active in this. But I believe that God wants more from us than just to take this as consumers. I believe that God's design for us in this is as we live that faith, that trust kind of life, that we become uh, instruments for Him in this world. So I'm going to take you back to that thing that I've said since I've been here, and that is God has strategically placed you in a circle of people who desperately need life, we know that's true. God has said, you're the salt of the earth, you're the light of the world. He's also said, uh, Paul says that we are ambassadors for Christ. And we could go through all of those kind of things that we say we believe. And now they have to come home for us. That circle of people in, in which we are placed by God, they need to know what it looks like to live a life that is full of trust in God. Let me turn that around just to give you a little perspective on that. Uh, those people in our circles are watching us. If they knew what our thoughts were about this COVID-19 coronavirus situation, if they knew what our fears were, what our, where our emotions were in all of this, if they could just peel back the exterior of who we are and look deep into our hearts and into our minds about this, would what they see cause them to want to gun go to Jesus, or would it be a hurdle for them to get over? You see, when we dwell in the shadow of the Almighty, it gives us a message. The, the, the response that God gives us in our faithfulness is that He is faithful, and He gives us peace of mind and comfort and, and just an awareness of, of the fact that He's not going to leave us here. So we have to pass that on. It, what a great opportunity we have been given in this world today that Christians in this town, in your neighborhood, on your block, you have the opportunity to give a report to people around you about the hope that is in you, and that's strictly because of Jesus Christ. Doesn't mean it's not hard. Matter of fact, we know that it's hard. In just a moment, you're going to uh, have the opportunity to hear a song that was written by a couple of our church members. Uh, it's the first time it's ever been uh, seen the light of day, so to, speak, uh, so to speak. And I want you to listen closely to the lyrics because it, it acknowledges that we don't live in, a, in this Pollyanna kind of world where there's no trouble. We don't, we don't deny the fact that there's trouble out there and we don't deny the fact that it has a way of creeping in on us. But there's a better message for us. And so as you listen to this song, I want you to really listen to the words and see if there's not truth in it for you that we should trust in God. And when that's over, we're going to have a prayer time. And I, I would like to ask you, and it would be one of those deals where there will be a timer at the bottom of the screen for you. And so whether you're by yourself or with a family, uh, use that time to pray. But this time not for yourself. Use that time as a way to pray for those people who are out there. And let me give you a prompt or two. Uh, we should be praying for our mayor and city leaders. Um, you know, if you look back over the last 12 months, what they have had to endure, the stress that has been on them with the immigration crisis and all that came with that, and then the shooting at Walmart in August, and, and now this, uh, that group of city leaders has gone through the fire. And we need to pray for them, and we should be grateful that at least some of those we know uh, call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's pray for them. We also want to pray for those people who are in the medical field or on the front lines of all of this, the researchers who are trying to find vaccines and all of the, we, we have people we should be praying for. And don't forget to pray for those people in your circle that God would use you and be so real in your life that it would cause them to recognize that and respond. 
So let's go to that prayer time now. Or actually, we'll do the song first and then the prayer time. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this week. There's a few minutes left here, so stick with us.
Good morning, church family. This is where we normally meet on Sunday, here at the front doors of First Baptist Church. I know we cannot meet here today, and we may not for a time. It reminds me of the passage of Scripture in Jeremiah 29, when the exiles wrote to the prophet and asked him, How long will it be? He used the uncertain term of 70 years, which meant, I don't know how long. But while you're there, build your houses, plant your gardens, marry your children, and so we have that same kind of recommendation for us today. Stay at home, protect yourselves, continue to worship together via uh, the TV, uh, via the telecom that we have. And so I hope that you'll take advantage of that. And I hope that you will stay together. Make contact with each other in your Sunday school class. Be sure to find out if someone needs help to be going to the grocery store or need help picking up items that you might be able to deliver to them at their home. Also, by the way, our church continues to need tithes and offerings so we can sustain our uh, weekly requirements for electricity, for gas, etc. And even in the interim, while we're not meeting, uh, bills still go on. So let me encourage you to give either via uh, our website at www fbcep.com and there they'll follow the links to where you can uh, go online to give to the church or you can mail your contribution in to First Baptist Church 805 Montana, El Paso, Texas 79902 May the Lord bless you Would you pray with me please Father I thank you for your love and your kindness to us each and every day I pray that you will bless our church as we are scattered out but as we anticipate coming back together to handshake, to give hugs, to reunite together as brothers and sisters in Christ, just bless us in this interim period together. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.